we are talking in this session about dialectical behavioral therapy. This is the second session. Um, what is dialectical behavioral therapy? Is a therapy that can be used for um, depression and anxiety, borderline personality, bipolar addiction, any mental health problem. It, it was, as I told you last time, it was developed uh, uh, at the beginning for um, borderline personality disorder, but then they find it is beneficial for other mental health problems. If you want to read more about dialectical behavioral therapy, these are these two books are very good. The, the, they are workbooks you can use. Um, most of my patients use the one on the left, like that's the dialectical behavioral therapy skills workbook. They say it is easier to understand. Um, also, our built health services are offering a full therapy. So I'm, I'm teaching only some of the skills of dialectical behavioral therapy. But if you want a full dialectical behavioral therapy, you will ask your family doctor to refer you through Access Mental Health for uh, Alberta Health Dialectical Behavioral Therapy. Uh, course and it include group therapy, individual therapy, and assignment. Uh, in this session, I teach not maybe sixty to seventy percent of the skills of dialectical behavior therapy. Um, so, um, as we mentioned last time, dialectical behavior therapy include four things. Okay, w one of them is uh, distress uh, tolerance. Another one is mindfulness. Another part is emotional regulation. Another part is interpersonal effectiveness. Um, we still doing the distress tolerance. Well, the stress tolerance means you're gonna learn some skills to help you to cope with the stress better. This is uh, this is a part of the the stress tolerance. Mindfulness. I, I'm sure you heard about the word meditation and mindfulness. You're gonna learn some mindfulness technique to help you to be present. We know with uh, mental health problems, we always worry about the future or, or regret the past. This mindfulness skills will help you to be in the present moment. Um, another part is emotion regulation. You're gonna learn some skills to regulate your feeling uh, and recognize them and observe them and not get overwhelmed by the emotion. Um, I'm talking about the negative emotions. Um, the last part is the relationship part. Interpersonal effectiveness is about relationships. Uh, this is a part you're gonna learn how to say no, how to set boundaries, how to negotiate. At the same time, you maintain the relationship. Um, I would suggest and recommend that when you learn some of these skills, apply it right away. Because reading or listening to talks about mental health doesn't help if you are not applying them in your life. So when you learn some skills and you like them and it resonates with you, go ahead and apply them in your life. Um, we talked last time that uh, the, first, so the first part is the stress tolerance or the stress tolerance. And we learned last time distraction techniques, some techniques to distract yourself from the stressful situation. This is what we did last time. For today, we're going to learn some self-soothing skills, something to calm you down when you are stressed. Okay, the distraction techniques, you know, it was, uh, you. Uh, everyone set a plan for distraction when they are in a uh, in, uh, in a stressful situation, they can use pleasurable activities, they can use um, tasks and chores for distraction, they can use to get their attention into someone, uh, how to distract yourself from destructive behavior. We did this last time. This time we will learn these soothing skills. These soothing skills will, get, will give you strength and the energy to be able to cope with the stress. Okay, and you're gonna learn how to treat yourself kindly. And at the same time, the same as last time, at the end, there is an exercise that gonna ask you, give me a relaxation plan. Last time we learned how to set a distraction plan. This time we are gonna learn how to set a relaxation plan. And every one of us should know how they can relax their body and how they can relax their mind so they can cope better with uh, 
everyday uh, stress. So the idea, you know, is easy for this session. Maybe this is the easiest uh, session to apply in all dialectical behavioral therapy. You know, you're gonna use your sensory input to relax and to feel calmer. So, you know, the sensation, I mean by sensory input, the sensation like the smell, uh, the hearing, the vision, the touch, the taste, you're gonna use all of this and engage your senses in things that you, you think it's gonna help you to relax. And it is a trial and error. I can't give you a plan. You are the one who's gonna come with the plan at the end. You know, everyone is different. There are some stuff here that I'm quoting is very irritating for some people. And there are some stuff here are very relaxing. So you're gonna choose what's gonna work for you. And if you don't know what's gonna work for you, you we will need to try some of this stuff and see what's gonna work. So the first one is self-soothing using a sense of smell. So you need to know what kind of smells that help you to relax. Some people when they burn scented candles, this helps them to relax. If this is help you to relax, they get it at home. Some people when they put perfume, they, they wear perfume, they feel much better and they relax. Okay, put perfume or buy perfume. Some people going to some places that has a smell, you know, a good smell, like uh, going to uh, a bakery or a restaurant or a park or certain places that gives them uh, the smell helps them to relax. Some people will relax when they bake their own food. The pleasing smell of the food while they are baking help or cooking, they help them to relax. Some people, the smell of the grass, I think this is most of us going on nature outdoor, the smell of the grass help you to relax and the outdoor smells in general help you to relax. Some people buying fresh cut flowers, okay, help them to relax. Uh, 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 so if this will be relaxed, you need, so this is what we're going to do. We need a plan. If this is if, uh, out of all these skills, this is the one that help you to relax uh, the flowers, uh, get flowers. Some people, when they hug someone who has a smell, you have your pet has a smell, hugging the, the pet and the smelling, the, the, you, 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 the pet has a smell or hugging your kids or hugging your your partner and they have every human being have a, a kind of a smell it doesn't have to be bad or good smell but sometimes the smell uh, when you hug other help you to relax also there are certain smells that trigger nostalgia nostalgia is uh, that mean that trigger uh, uh, experience in the past so maybe you like certain smell because it remind you uh, of a trip to Hawaii, or it remind you of a, from a, a, a certain smell remind you of Egypt, or certain smell remind you of uh, when you were ten years old. So and it, it bring you back right away to the same place at the same time in the past. Uh, so um, it is good to identify what uh, smell that help you to relax. Okay, this is one of the sensory inputs that we work on. Also, you need to know what visionary, like it, it, uh, uh, visual inputs that help you to relax. Uh, I would suggest that you have some picture or quotes, you know, that help you to relax and put it in your wall. Okay, but but try to get the quotes that will a positive quotes. It's not easy. There are some messages that you can get from quotes that trigger anger and fear, you know. But there, are, I, I'm sure if you have been working with me and with the doctor. Uh, there are certain people we always talk about and certain books that we always recommend uh, um, quotes from these people uh, uh, will help you uh, when you see them help you to relax also a picture of a place that you like or or a, or a place that like going hiking to certain mountains certain places if this is where you relax this is how you're gonna regain your energy you know uh, 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 when you go to these places. Also nature photographs, like if you take photos of certain places of nature and you put it at home. Also, if you like drawing, if you can draw certain picture and you like them and you wanna put it in the wall, this would be nice or a, as a background in your computer. Also you to carry a, a, a photograph of someone you love uh, uh, or you like or you admire, this will help you to relax too. So you see, you try to find something visual that will help you to relax. Try to find something you can smell that help you to relax. 
I know it sounds like very silly, like what, 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 like we are here to just learn about this stuff. Yeah, this stuff will make difference when you include them with other things in therapy. Yeah, this stuff by itself it will not help you. We, we need, you know, the biopsychosocial spiritual. So we are including part of the psychological techniques, how to relax, but we still need the physical part and exercise and the diet and the food and all this stuff. And, the, you know, the psychological counseling. Oh, by the way, uh, um, reading and listening without someone you talk to will not help. You need a friend or you need a counselor or you need a family member or you need a doctor or you need a colleague, someone, you know, very close to you that you are sure he will not be judgmental and you open up as if you are talking to yourself. This will change you. I have been doing this mental health therapy for years and i'm telling you reading reading is part of the plan the, the biggest part in the plan is to have a sponsor if you have addiction if to have a mentor if you are a student is to have a counselor if you have mental health problem is to have you know a, a group of people that you trust um so smell vision let's go to the hearing you need to identify things that you hear and make you relax i'm sure the first thing that come to mind is music you know you know certain songs or certain without with singing or without thinking you know the certain music will help you to relax so you will have a list of things one of them is the music okay some people what helps them to relax is listening to audio books i see I see lots of people now are very interested in listening to audio books. They're not reading, but listen to audio books. And some people, some people cannot go to sleep without listening to a book. Even if they miss some of the stuff, they say, no, the, the listening to a book, I pay attention and all of a sudden I go into deep sleep. So you see how listening to books sometimes for some people will help them to relax. Uh, turn on the TV sometimes, but if they talk about COVID, you know, switch uh the channel but uh listening to tv in general will help uh you to relax uh of course you know all these things can be very addictive so you know if you are addicted to youtube i i would suggest but it help you to relax i would suggest to set limit how how many minutes how many hours you're gonna listen to youtube or watch tv or listen to music um Open your window if if you look at you know uh, uh, like a source or like a park or something and you're gonna be listening to peaceful sounds outside. So open your window, uh, go uh, visit a park. Uh, the sound sometimes being in a park, the sounds uh, uh, outside sounds will will help you to relax. Uh, listen to recorded nature sound. Uh, listen to white noise. You know, white noise that is shh. I'm sure some people will be surprised that shh, this sound will help some uh, uh, lots of people to relax. You know, I have some patient, especially with, with a little bit of uh, Asperger or autistic feature, you know, when they hear, hear white noise, they relax right away. Okay, uh, and some people would use it to sleep. Um, the white noise could be uh, 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 circulating air could be sounds of birds, waterfalls, it could be rainforest, so many types of white noise. You'll find it on YouTube, you'll find it apps on the phone, lots of them on the phone, you know, uh, uh, you can use them when you want to relax, give it a try. Some some people, the white noise is very irritating. Some people, is uh, white noise is uh, very relaxing. So give it a try and see. Um, so again, you find something you like when you hear uh, something help you to relax, music, books, YouTube, whatever, uh, white noise. Um, some people will use the taste. Okay. So you need to, to know what is your favorite meal. Some people just eat. They so don't know what you eat, especially if there is addiction to food. You know, um, yes, yeah, it's a complex problem, but uh, anyway, you need to identify what is your favorite meal, okay? And the taste it when you are chewing and swallowing, taste it, identify the taste. And if you can't or you're always distracted, eat 
with closing your eyes. Try it at home. You're like, eat strawberry and close your eyes. It will taste different. Um, so to enjoy the food, sometimes you try it not. I'm not asking you to close your eyes every time you eat, you know, but try it sometimes to, it will help you to see the food differently. Um, so do it every now and then you eat with close your eyes and uh, the food will taste better. Um, always uh, gums, chewing gums for some people is very irritating. For some people it is uh, uh, very relaxing. You know, um, you, you need to be aware of uh, about this disorder, misophonia, um, which is selective sound sensitivity syndrome. Uh, lots of people have it, like uh, lots of people are very sensitive to the chewing sound and the swallowing sound and uh, the breathing sound. You know, it triggers them into a fight or flight response. I have seen a patient when I was practicing in Egypt get into a physical fight. It was a big fight because uh, the, the, the guy uh, was sitting behind him, he was chewing a gum. And it just uh, and uh, and he needed therapy to 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 reduce the sensitivity. It will not go away. Uh, you're gonna ask me, yeah, yeah. I know some people are like when they hear that chewing and they can't uh, get very irritated, uh, uh, easily provoked, and stuff like that. Uh, uh, what is causing this? I don't know. There is no uh, specific answer for it. Maybe the evolutionary uh, psychology can give some. Uh, hypothesis about how this is formed. They say, you know, because thousands of years ago, we were living in the bushes and uh, and we were hiding in the trees and uh, we hear other animals eating our fellow human being. And this is a trigger, you know, when you, you hear some someone is like an animal eating a family member or something, I'm talking about thousands of years ago, uh, or maybe more than thousand. Uh, uh, this and they say we inherited. Some people will inherit subconsciously the genetic predisposition for the sensitivity uh, and the trigger uh, fight or fright uh, response. Uh, also, when you are hiding, so when we were hiding behind trees or something, and in, 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 in the bushes, and uh, uh, and we hear an animal breathing, this is trigger fight or fight or response. Anyway, some people. Even hearing that, like chewing their gums, their own gum, uh, 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 hearing their their own uh, sound will trigger, uh, will be very irritating. So, like, be just be mindful that there are people who are sensitive to this, um, and there is therapy for this. You know, it is most effective one is exposure therapy. I, I did it to this patient in Egypt, which is I turn on. Uh, a video that have someone is chewing and I look at the patient, he was uh, sweating like crazy, His, he was flushed, he was ab about to, you know, you want to just fight. Uh, I didn't imagine that it is that bad in some people. Uh, but anyway, let's go back, you know, to relax. Uh, use your smell, those, use your hearing, you, you use your taste have a favorite meal or food, uh, eat a soothing food like ice cream, uh, drink something soothing, uh, uh, enjoy the way it tastes, uh, I, uh, popsicles or ice cubes uh, or ice pop, all this stuff uh, could be uh, self-soothing. Uh, be careful if you have food addiction uh, because lots of these stuff are addictive. So, you know, when there is a food addiction, I think you will need to talk to your therapist uh, or maybe at the beginning we're going to avoid using the food as a, a, a way for relief or escape uh, or reward because it could be very addictive um, touch you know you can use touch uh, i'm sure lots of you when you get a massage you feel better mentally physically and mentally of course, when we get a massage, if there is a history of sexual abuse, it can uh, uh, cause an opposite effect. Um, but, but you can work around it. You can tell your th massage therapist, you know, 
I prefer massage with the clothes on, or I prefer upper body, or I prefer like you, you can work on it. Or if there is, you know, if it is irritating, uh, don't use the massage. Uh, another thing is uh, have something in your pocket that is soft. To hold something soft in your pocket can help you to relax. Taking a hot shower for some people, hot shower is helping them to relax. For some people, cold shower helps them to relax. You try and uh, and see. Uh, warm uh, bubble bath will be good too. Uh, um, you massage yourself if you have a sore arm or a sore neck. Also, play with your pet. You know uh, this can help you relax. I think I told you many times that having a pet at home can extend your uh, lifespan uh, and the there are studies about uh, having a pit uh, will lower your blood pressure you reduce the risk for heart attacks will uh, lower your cholesterol so uh, I think playing with a pit is a very uh, positive behavior uh, also wearing comfortable clothes help you to relax instead of wearing like very tight stuff anyway uh, this is one of the exercises. You will tell me about a plan, how you're gonna relax, okay? Uh, uh, yeah, I forgot what you said, it's easy, easy. Some stuff will use the smell, uh, okay? Smell of uh, food, the smell of perfume, whatever. Uh, 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 essential oils, lavender, this stuff, okay. Some people will use hearing, like hearing white noise, music, TV, audio box. Some people will use touch, you know, touching a pet, uh, 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 getting a massage, having a cold or warm uh, shower. Uh, some people will uh, use the vision, see something that help you to relax, go on hiking, have some quotes or picture in, on the walls, of photographs of nature. This will help you to relax. Anyway, at the end, I will give you some time to create a relaxation plan. And this is what we're gonna share with each other. Okay, another exercise we, we will have today is, uh, it is they found this exercise will help be people to cope with the stress better, is to identify your values and the meaning of life. Okay, uh, this is a, you know, a very deep, discussion maybe later we can look at the philosophical part of meaning of life but uh, this is not what we're going to do today uh, this is just we're going to identify the main things you know i'm sure if you are doing counseling with me you will find in my questionnaire or the, in, in the form i ask you at the end what are the important values in your life and what gives the meaning for your life I ask these two questions because lots of people with mental health problem, you ask this question and they don't, they don't know, just to tell you, I don't know what is important. I don't know what give meaning in life, just live. Um, you know, there is in Western countries, there is an existential crisis uh, caused by disconnection from spirituality. Um, Part of his spirituality is to identify the meaning of life. Uh, 200 years ago, this question was not that important because people was using religion as a way to give them meaning. So if you ask anyone uh, 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 why you're living, you're going to say to serve God, what's the purpose of this life is to go to heaven. Or if you are Buddhist is to reincarnate in better form or, uh, or achieve nirvana or something like this. You know, people now is considering religion is dead or God is dead, and uh, they, try, they have to find a different meaning uh, or some way to connect with their spirituality without uh, a formal religion. Uh, for some people, still using a formal religion, organized religion as a way to connection. Some people are not. But anyway, go, let's go back. W what are values? Values are ethics or principles or ideals or less standards or moral you know it is not just the ideas it is also an action you take in life to respect these values i always tell my patient identify your values and live with them because any discrepancy between your values and your behavior will create uh, uh, guilt and uh, and anger and uh, uh, unfulfilling life 
So again, you know your values, stick to them. And then if, you're, if, you're, if your values are here and the behavior is here, uh, two things you can do, like lower your values a little bit or improve your behavior a little bit. But for mental health, we need both to be at the same level. Okay, uh, this will make your life more fulfilling and will lower, sorry, it improve your tolerance to stress uh, and it lowers the inner tension. Anyway, uh, I, I'm planning like maybe sometime in the future, we're gonna talk about these things in, 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 in depth because I, I see lots of people in this existential crisis uh, with even sometimes the suicidal thoughts because there is no meaning um but anyway this is an exercise uh you're gonna it's easy it's not that philosophical to answer this question is the you know choose three things that make your life more fulfilling i think all of us will need all of them but choose three that you are planning to work on some people you ask them where do you, why do you live you gonna i live for fam my family or why do you live oh I, the most important thing is the romantic relationship that i have for some people the parenting for others a friendship or work or education some people you I, I i meet with them they tell you as long as i am learning something new every day i'm very good so for some people education is the most important value and what it gives meaning in life some people recreation and the fun, some people spirituality, some people community life and supporting the marginalized and helping uh, people struggling with harmlessness or uh, addiction or, uh, or, or poverty or unemployment. Uh, some people, the self-care, you know, I'm sure you have met people exercise and diet and the, they are very mindful of what they eat and how they look and this is what gives meaning. Uh, and some people, you know, we can... The, there is endless list of what is important for people. Uh, for you, for today exercise, I just want you to choose three. I know that you, lots of you want us to choose all of them, but let's choose the three important things for you now. And they tell me what action you're gonna take to work on them. Let's say if you choose family, uh, how, how are you gonna spend, let me know how we're gonna spend more quality time with your family. If you choose education, tell me what, what what is your future goal about education? What do you want to learn and how are you going to learn it? If you tell me spirituality, tell me how you're going to connect with the spirituality. Are you going to learn some meditation or are you going to pray more or read the Bible or what, what, what are you going to do? Okay, so again, we have two exercises today, an easy exercise. We're going to, I promise we're going to finish early today because the weather is good and all of you want to go for a walk. Um, we have only two exercises. You're going to create a relaxation plan and you're going to choose uh, three things that make your life important. Uh, I'll give you, and you tell me the action, what you're going to take. I'll give you five minutes to answer this question. Then we will have a discussion. If, if there are some people who attend for the first time, um, if you, you, you are welcome to share. Uh, if you don't want to share and listen to other because this is the first time, it's completely fine. Uh, see you in uh, five minutes.